Hello and welcome to RC Shin. Thanks for joining me in my hangar. Just a small excursion to antennas. I've been asked about different antennas lately some by some guys. So and with the ground station uh, Hobby King also sent me the Aomwe antennas which look fairly good and in another test video I saw some guy testing the, the flight performance of SPVs from Aomwe versus the Fetchark ones. And I can show you in this picture here that the Aomwe and the Fetchaks really look very similar once you remove the plastic protection uh, from the Fetchaks, from the Immersion RC Fetchak antennas. So, and I think the, the Aomway are about half the price. So they are really cheap and they are protected with this plastic mold here. Um, no, no protection on, on SPV antennas like on the circular wireless, which are excellent by the way. Uh, no protection is, is not a good solution either because you see how bent this thing is. So some protection like here on the arm ways or the full protection like on the immersions is a good idea usually. Um, the cable of the arm ways is about the same flexibility and bendability like on the immersions. Of course all the Serious antennas have the normal SMA connectors. This is the, the industry standard. In, a, in an upcoming uh, range test, I will test the Armways versus the Fat Shark immersion RC thingies and against the old but trusty circular wireless things. But they will about perform the same, I'd say. Uh, I don't think that any of these has more range than the other. Maybe they're their build quality makes a better overall experience and, and less breakups uh, if you if you flying in rough conditions. Um, but there is some discussion or some some question marks by viewers about the patch antennas, and I have three different patches here to compare for you. Uh, it's also the arm way. Uh, which come on this uh, on the same cable actually as they use for the smaller ones. So it's bendable patch, which is a really nice idea. The immersions for a difference have the screwing connector on the back, so you have to use some adapters or some cabling or screw it. It, it would be best to mount it directly on the receiver, and not to lose any signal strength. Um, from the quality, build quality is about the same. I took a look inside the own way and found just a PDB board with four with four patches on it. I think this will look about the same. But I will have a look for you for comparison. Um, this one is 13 dB and this is rated at 14 dB, so slightly more distance with this. What is the beam width of this compared to this? Here I think it is 35 degree, which is kind of narrow, but it has a huge gain. And it's um, Oscar Liang, I hope it's correct, it's, um, compared it in, in one of his articles, which I can really recommend you. Um, you always have the same amount of gain available for an antenna. And in ideal, uh, or in if you have an omnidirectional antenna, it's like a huge balloon which is perfectly round under perfect conditions. Of course the normal uh, antennas we use are not perfectly spheres but they have a, a dip on the bottom and the top so they look like a donut. Uh, that's why if you move the antenna this way facing to the receiving station you have a null above it. Um, but you have a round shape which has some kind of gain on these one. If you move to a directional antenna, uh, you can imagine uh, squeezing the balloon 
into one direction. So the balloon gets longer. The amount of air that's in the balloon is, is the same, but you shape it to be formed in one direction. And that's what the directional antennas does or do. And the amount of, of squeezing together narrows the beam width you get, but makes it longer. So on these uh, totally insane uh, directional antennas, Yagi antennas, you have like uh, uh, a bucket <laughs> rather than a donut, so to say. Um, what I found is convenient with patches is this uh, really tiny immersion RC8 dBi. That's a compromise. It's squeezing it uh, about 90 degree of beam width and it gets to you 8 dBi, so you get more more range with this and it's the perfect size for mounting it directly on the fat chuck goggles or, or whatever goggles you use. So these patches I've been using the fat chucks uh, for the last two years or so. Prior to the fat chuck equipment I used the circular wireless a lot. I read about the difference between patch antennas and helical antennas. And it's really complicated matter. I mean, these are also directional ones, like the patches, but they have like not only a, a directional force, but they all, uh, also have some lobes on, on the side. So you do get some uh, range on sideways and on the back. This here has 12 dB of gain. So it's a bit less uh, gain than this here. Uh, is has a more stable receiving uh, strength than the patches. That's that's at least what I read out of this discussion. So yeah, if you have multipassing because you have reflections of your wireless signal coming to you from a long range, the helicals will cope better with it than the patches. Even the sharpness of the image and the colors depend on the on the quality of the antenna, and the helicals just have a bit better quality. Of course, you can buy cheap and expensive ones. This. Uh, this one was originally sold for 65 euros, which is quite a lot for an antenna. Um, I saw that those uh, circular wireless SPV antennas are now also sold on Hoppy King. They are red and blue or something like that. And they are sold through Hoppy King from circular wireless. So not to forget these standard antennas. They are bad in so many ways. That's why you don't see them normally in use. Um, they are omnidirectional, that means you once again can imagine a donut uh, being placed around this antenna, but the signal is not circularly polarized. This means straight uh, radio waves go out of the sender and, and come into the receiver, but if the antennas don't match the direction anymore, you don't get a good uh, overlapping signal. And the other thing is multipassing. If you have reflections caught up by such an antenna, it will be totally weird. Sometimes the reflections give you super good quality and sometimes they eliminate themselves. So reflections from multipassing will kill you on a standard antenna. Um, and the circular polarized antenna, it just sends circular waves, so to say, and if they reflect, they turn in their orientation and this turned orientation signal is far less than the original signals. As I said, for, for on-goggle use, I like the small one here. For diversity systems, this combination worked good for me. Uh, 360 degree antenna and a directional one with good uh, with a good narrow beam uh, for a good range. Uh, of course, you can also use two of these directional antennas and move them a bit overlapping so you get a better range. Or I also used two of those. And those have a uh, wider beam width. I think they have 60 degree compared to 35 degree. So if you mount two of these on a diversity system, you get really good coverage. 120 degrees, think about this. Okay, enough talking about antennas. Hope you liked this excursion. If I left something out, or if I 
should tell you something more about the stuff, just leave me a comment. Uh, of course, check out the description. Uh, I cover rather technical uh, things often in my videos, in my reviews, and you need a lot of links and, and descriptions and text specs for this. I don't want to put everything into the video because no one will read it. But if you're really interested, check the description below and, and find it out. Uh, if you have some additions uh, or some corrections, just tell me in the comments and I will uh, update the description. So the description should really be uh, a useful source of information for you guys on my videos. Keep that in mind. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.